You are listening to Beyond the Verse, a Star Citizen podcast. A show dedicated to Cloud Imperium games, Star Citizen and Squadron 42. Whether you fight, explore, unite, and or trade, we bring you news, updates, interviews, reviews, and analysis. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a pour of Radagast, and join us as we go Beyond the Verse. Launch sequence activated. Hello, friends, and welcome to episode 37 of Beyond the Verse Star Citizen podcast. I'm your host, Solus, and this is episode entitled 322. What a day we had yesterday. So first off, it is Friday morning, the day after the release of 322. Uh, But yesterday was filled with ups and downs. We laughed. We cried a little bit together. Um, It was a scary, it was a scary time to have made a prediction at six o'clock in the morning and then not really seeing any glimpses of hope throughout the day, fending off several um, lovely individuals on social media and their very um, emotional opinions and uh, and still coming out on top. It's a win for Beyond the Verse podcast. Uh, we've had several of those this year, not to, uh, not to boast, but I think when you have um, a lot of working knowledge of the industry, a lot of understanding of schedules, you can take a risk and you can you can predict some things. So um, I won't belabor that too much. This isn't about me and getting lucky. Quite honestly, it was it, it was luck. Star Citizen could have done anything they wanted to yesterday. <laughs> um, you know, and we would have all been along for the ride and supported their decisions. But as it is, they launched 322 yesterday uh, and our organization, Soul Provision, still decided it'd be a good idea. Uh, to have an org night last night on a patch release night, <laughs> uh, which which for the most part was uh, was pretty good. I mean, there weren't any um, major server issues, and I'm gonna knock on wood because that probably means the next couple of days are going to be very lively, very lively. Well, hey everyone, welcome in. Uh, I hope this finds everybody well. Uh, we're gonna take a quick little break for our sponsor. If you are so lucky to have been chosen to listen to one, um, otherwise we will get started. So uh, we'll wait for you when you get back. So yesterday was a lot of fun. Um, this this podcast, as it always has been, will be about the entire week. We'll go through um, Luminalia. Obviously, got started, so we'll go through Luminalia. We'll go through, of course, the three twenty two information, the roadmap update, uh, the lore makers, questions from the community. We're going to go through what to expect. Well, sort of. I was going to say we're going to go through what to expect from like the next patch and like what is coming down the pipeline, but I think Inside Star Citizen does that significantly better than what I could ever do. It's actually one of the best Inside Star Citizens that we've that I've personally have have seen. Yeah, it it announces a lot of information it teases a lot of information it makes a content creator like myself very happy um, because it gives me something to look forward to and to help tease so we had the release of the apoa uh, the aoa good lord the aopoa so i think i used to say opoa it's aopoa so the Aopoa santakiai the origin x1 series there's a new cutter which i couldn't care less Um, about the Rambler, but you know my opinion at this point when it comes to Drake and when it comes to the Cutter. Um, There was an update to Salvage and Repair. Um, Well, there's a lot of updates to the Salvage and Repair. So we're going to go through the guide as well. uh, And then we'll probably end, depending on how much time we spend on everything before, we will end on reviewing the Lore Makers uh, community questions. There's some gold nuggets in there that I think uh, we would all enjoy. So, uh, yeah, I think for this week's or this episode's, like from the community, we should do, you know, we read emails, we refer to a Q&A or polls, but I think I just want to talk about last night. So last night, it was the first official 
org night with soul provision. It's actually the photo of the YouTube thumbnail uh, that you're seeing uh, me post on social media. You're obviously seeing it on YouTube, but we, we had a very, very, very fun night. Uh, a good group of us from soul provision. I think we're at like 75 individuals in the organization. We had, uh, I think at max, we had nine show up last night. Um, which is, which is great. That was actually more than a 10th of the server because servers, when they went live last night, were no more than 60 to 70 um, individuals. So we had over the, a 10th of the server in one location at any given time. So that was, that was awesome. But we started off, first off, character creation, and we'll get into what happens in, <laughs> in the patch release and everything, but uh, the character creation piece was huge. And as, as the org owner, um, I wanted to make sure that we didn't just dictate and speed through such a, I mean, such a monumental part of, of Star Citizen and what they've released. So we wanted to make sure, hey, when you get in, take your time, choose your preferred haircut, enjoy the new uh, options. And so we kind of got started on the later side. This is 9 p.m. U.S. Central. We got started on the later side, uh, which is fine. Um, then you know, the next question, hey, Solus, where, where are we making our home, our home base, our residence? Well, again, I don't want to dictate that. Lore-wise, Soul Provision has always kind of been in the Crusader area. Um, I've written it into our speakeasy that we're calling the Spirit of the Soul. Um, the speakeasy is is a it's on a lost uh, platform that has detached from the Orison chain or network uh, of platforms. Um, so like that's written into the lore of Soul Provision. Um, so I always make Crusader, at least moving forward, I will always make Crusader my my home. But I again don't want to dictate that for my community. So we we started our all over the place, all over Stanton. So we had to first get to New Babbage. <laughs> So as you can kind of see where this story is going, I don't think we finally got all together until like 9.30, 9.45. This is 30 or 45 minutes into Orc Night. But it's about the community. And I can't, I can't stress that enough. I, I could literally sit for, I mean, hell, I do a podcast. It's probably pretty obvious. But I could probably sit for two, three hours not doing a damn thing um, and, and just listening and talking to you know the people I've grown to you know to love I mean my brother was was on the podcast or not podcast but on the uh on the org night last night as well so it was just a really great um experience even if we were just standing around waiting for everyone to show up so we did we took photos um around the Luminalia secret cove which by the way on socials I dropped uh, a video on how to get to that so if you're curious what I'm talking about go on to btv underscore cast any of the social media platforms and you'll find that video. But we took a really awesome photo there. Um, and then right afterwards, we all got into my reclaimer, or we'll call it the orgs, um, reclaimer that we've affectionately called the munchies. I think that's that's a pretty badass name for, uh, for reclaimer that doesn't munch anymore. Um, it vacuums, but I'm not gonna call it the sucker. No, I'm not doing it. Uh, <laughs> so we all got into the munchies and uh, we took off, right? Which, by the way, the munchies can now hold 420 SCU. I, I don't know if that's uh, intentional, but you can kind of see a theme going on with the ship. Anyway, so we <laughs> we take off um, and like the, you know, your, your reputation resets. So we only had four options. Both were the 1000 UEC fee um, options. So it was either taking a reclaimer to salvage a Scorpius or the reclaimer to salvage a cutter. So of course, if you listen to this podcast, you know how much I despise the Drake cutter. So we went out very overpowered and took out the Drake cutter in like literally two minutes. If that, um, we sucked that thing dry. Uh, there we go. That's the last thing. <laughs> the, the last pun I'm going to go with the reclaimer. Uh, but it was fine, right? So we had, what, you know, eight, nine people on the reclaimer. We had a couple of individuals bring, um, I, I'm going to probably get this wrong. We had like a, a C2, an M2. Um, I think one of us brought a, um, not a Corsair, um, a Cutlass, sorry, a Cutlass. Um, so it was really awesome to see all these ships floating around this one little, you know, 
POS um, grouping of, of, of a cutter. Um, but, but, but we didn't stop there. So, so this might be something CIG has thought of. And, and if they haven't, I'm about to ruin something for a lot of people. But we were sitting there having completed the, the cutter salvaging in like, like I said, two minutes. And we're like, now what? Do we fly somewhere for 30 minutes to, to find the next ship? No. We told one of our dudes to get out of the M2 and we salvaged the M2. <laughs> Uh, or the or, or the C two, it was one of the others. Um, so we we literally had them get out. They EVA'd over to the reclaimer, and we started to salvage um, one of our own orgs uh, ships, um, just to get more practice and to get more experience. And we did. We ended up filling up the entire reclaimer um, easily. I mean, maybe all four hundred and twenty. At least it, it it felt like it was. And it was so much fun to have two in the scraper seats, to have me and another in the back, which our organization calls runners. So we have two runners in the back that are handling the boxes and putting them on the cargo grid. Um, again, we had somebody outside with a tractor beam actually manipulating and moving uh, what we were trying to salvage, but then to put everybody at the end of the night into the back of the reclaimer and obviously take org photos, um, it's a screenshot opportunity, but but moving those cargo boxes, I mean, we, we, we took out my brother, the dude probably still has a concussion, um, but juggling 16 SEU crates uh, and like trying to fit more than what uh, the, the cargo grid could hold. Um, it was just a very, very fun experience. And so as we have these org nights, um, I think it's important for me to share a little bit of those experiences on the podcast because that's, that is this game. I mean, you follow Beyond the Verse for like maybe to learn more about the production of video games, maybe um, to get a little bit of a flair when it comes to what was announced this week with like, again, a lore, a lore flair to each, uh, to, you know, to each item. Um, whatever reason you listen to me, first off, I love you and thank you. But I think the main, if I were to get anything across to my listeners, it's about community. It's really not even about the game. It's about the community and that camaraderie you have whenever you play something. I mean, we've got people in the org going through some tough shit right now. I mean, their lives in Q4 getting into Christmas has has been rough as crap. And this has been their outlet. Maybe not because it's a, you know, a, a set of pixels on a on a computer screen, but it's because it's the brotherhood, right? The sisterhood, the family that is gaming. So like I said, and I'll, I'll wrap this up here. I think it's important to get into these community conversations. We had a great time last night. I wanted to share that with you. If you are looking for a home, again, last night was the first the first night, so I'm not going to claim like we're the most active organization in the world. Um, but if you're looking for a home, we are growing so fast. We went from 30 to 70 in like two weeks. Um, and we're going to continue to grow and it's going to be, it's going to be a lot of fun. We have a good vision, right? For what's going to happen in 2024. Um, join us, right? Uh, there's links in bio, there's links in the description. Uh, we would love to have you and there's no weird application and you don't need to, I don't know, you don't need to like perform or send in a video, um, you know, resume for who you are. Don't need it. Don't want it. Don't care about it. Um, you know, if you just want a home, we have it for you. So let me let me stop there and we can actually move on to the star citizen news for the week but hopefully you enjoyed that community segment so this week in star citizen and and actually let me pause most of what we're going to be going through in the next couple of minutes is is null it's it's moot because because we just launched 322 last night so when it says like oh we're we're ptue testing or ptu testing um 322 i mean of course we're beyond that right so take the next couple of minutes with a grain of salt kind of take the the teasing out of the next couple minutes and i think it'll all uh it all makes sense but here we go this week in star citizen let me share my screen for those of you on youtube um here we go which by the way, the C1, which is what you're seeing on the screen, is growing on me and I hate that it is. 
it like I, I don't know I couldn't find like a necessary like a home or a reason as to why you'd want this because there's already a ship that's cheaper who who does it well um, okay anyways I'm actually really starting to enjoy that ship happy Monday everyone it's time to bust out the hot chocolate ready your festive attire and invite your co-pilots aboard Luminalia is back with plenty of activities and goodies alike, including daily free gifts, we hope you have a great and cozy time. Head over to the Luminalia page for all the details and to claim your daily presents, learn about the holiday missions, and more. Additionally, if you invite a friend to join the verse by January 8th, you'll both receive a carefully compiled selection of gear for free and our latest referral bonus. We have some celebratory discounted holiday starter packs and much more awaiting you and your future co-pilot. In the meantime, the team continue to craft our end of year patch, Star Citizen Alpha 322. We're aiming to release before the holiday break and therefore invite you to join us in driving the last Bah humbugs out of their hiding places. Alpha 322 is currently available to all players on the PTU servers. Now let's see what's going on this week. And I usually just scroll down and show you the calendar. Alrighty, Tuesday, Luminalia Day 2, obviously, and then the Lore Makers Community Questions. Again, we'll cover that at the very end if we have time. Wednesday, Roadmap Update, Roadmap Roundup. Again, kind of null, kind of moot, uh, because we launched what was on the roadmap. Thursday, yesterday's Inside Star Citizen. We absolutely will cover Inside Star Citizen. We'll we'll play it. We'll react to it. It was it was uh, it's a lot to unpack, and probably the majority of our conversation is going to come out of that um, after we get through three twenty two. So today, Friday, later today, we're going to have Star Citizen live, and let's see what this topic is. We'll sit down with AI director Francesco Racucci and AI programmer Diego Mason, who will answer your questions relating to their CitizenCon presentations and your experiences with the new AI in Alpha three twenty two PTU and then join us and it has the information on Twitch. So, awesome, feel free to do that. I um, I usually work, <laughs> obviously, during that time. 8 a.m. Pacific is 10 a.m. Uh, US Central, so I never get to watch these live. But what I do, um, what I do do, is later in the evening, um, I'll go back and watch uh, the video on demand, but, so I will not be there. <laughs> So there you go. Again, most of the information from Inside Star, I'm sorry, from um, This Week in Star Citizen, we can kind of just move past quickly uh, as everything is, is has been negated to this point. All right, Luminalia 2953. Uh, okay, so if you are curious what Luminali, uh, Luminalia is, go to last week's episode. It's episode 36. We go through the lore, kind of what last year's Luminalia was all about. Uh, and we predicted that this would start on December 11th or this week, and sure enough, it, it did. That wasn't like a, a hard guess. <laughs> uh, I, think, I think the community pretty much expected it uh, as well. There's not a lot different with this year, as predicted. Um, there's not a lot different. You have the 12 days, uh, a couple of other in and out of game events and contests, but let's go through this quickly. So here we go. Um, here's the landing page. So feel free, robertspaceindustries.com forward slash comlink forward slash transmission forward slash 19605 hyphen luminalia hyphen 2953. There you go. Citation complete. The spirit of the season, what is Luminalia? If you listen to our podcast, you know. All right, holiday deals. Under your tree until January 8th, these door busters will blow your airlock wide open to the tune of seasonal starter packs and discounted subscription offers. I think the last piece is super important. Discounted sub subscription offers. That is going to be big for you. All right, moving on. Enhanced holiday insurance and holly jolly ship paints will make sure you're ready to take on the new year, while new limited time three month subscription options give you a taste of monthly perks and exclusive rewards. And share in the spirit of giving with a referral promo that promises unique rewards for both the refer and the new player. Which let me make sure I open that up so we can look at it. It is, it's interesting. There's there's like a set for the refer, referrer, <laughs> and a set for the referral. It's interesting. It's different. It's not a ship this year. Uh, 
All right, so 12 days of giving plus fun in the verse. So there's a calendar we'll get to here in a second. Uh, so I'm actually gonna skip over that piece. Uh, arena Commander, here we go. Come out to the arena, we'll all get together, have a few laughs to the article. Jump into the intense action of Arena Commander's Team Elimination and Gun Rush modes this holiday season and prepare to get blasted with both comfort and joy. Be the top dog or reindeer in either mode to earn yourself a festive holiday pico. Join in the seasonally appropriate chaos and ruin your opponent's luminalia whilst draped in festive regalia. Then, of course, playable from Alpha 322 launch until January 8th. Uh, there is a calendar, and hopefully, I might have to go to my notes to pull it out. Um, there are CIG employees that will also be participating on certain days and certain times. So if you wanted to play with our special guest from a couple episodes ago, Galaxtica, the social media manager, uh, you would find her name and make sure you're playing on that day around that time. So that's an interesting, uh, interesting dynamic this year that I don't think they did last year. I don't recall them doing last year. Okay, holiday cards. This is not different. They actually did do this last year. So spirited competition, a couple of con uh, con convivial, convivial contests. On the second day of Luminalia, my true love gave to me two community contests. First, try your hand at creating a holiday greeting card with sending across the galaxy, then take on a CIG staff in Arena Commander for the chance to win fabulous prizes and to be immortalized in the <laughs> the, the annals. It's not annals. Uh, it sounds horrible. I To be immortalized. <laughs> the season of legendary harbinger of festive violence. You know, it's funny. I'm uh, my undergrad was in English. Of course, I'm a podcaster, so obviously I'm confident whenever it comes to speaking. But there's some words that that I'm I'm used to. I'm used to saying. I'm used to like I'm used to, like it's not new to me. But when it comes out of my mouth, I'm like, oh, for some reason it's not like clicking. <laughs> I'm gonna get myself in trouble or canceled if I'm not careful. So usually when I stumble over something like that, that's that's what's going in the back of my mind. I don't want to get canceled, so let's move on. <laughs> Here's your Luminalia calendar. Uh, again, it's 12 days starting from um, December 11th, so we're on the fifth day right now. You only see four pictures on the screen because it's not 10 a.m. U.S. Central yet. So at 10 a.m. U.S. Central, the number five will come live. You click on it and you'll get whatever item is behind it. So, so far, on day one, we got paints for the horrible, horrible ship, the Cutter. Um, and this is your 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 basic um, ice break and deck the hull. So deck the hull is your green and red. Ice break is your white and blue. So you get both of those for the cutter. And then you have an amazing sweater. It's an amazing sweater. So it, it's Pico the penguin holding up a torch, right for Luminalia, holding up a torch. Um, and the design is like this overall, maybe it's like a, bluish purple maybe um and white it, it looks like a phenomenal sweater that i would buy in in real life i legitimate would buy this and i'm not saying it's ugly but i would wear it for all of my ugly sweater holiday events i have like four this month whether it's work or at my church like I would wear that. I would absolutely wear this. And so I made a social media post like, hey, dear CIG merch team, when when can we get this? Because we would buy it. I absolutely promise you, if we're gonna spend 150 bucks on a on a on a JPEG, <laughs> on a grouping of pixels, uh, we would probably spend money on on a sweater. But that sweater, it, it's sick. So for day two, it's a really awesome V-neck sweater. Uh, moving on. So the freelancer also got, this is day three, the freelancer also got the ice break and the deck the whole uh, paint jobs. And then yesterday for day four, um, you got this Banu spirited uh, coffee mug or whatever mug. Um, right on the outside, gray on the inside. I actually really like um, this mug. But again, I'm having a hard time truly buying into the super small um, FPS items. Right, like the subscription flare for this month are the little potted plants. I don't know. It, it, it's it's for a part of the community. It's just not for me. 
So the cup is awesome. I think the design is great, but it's one of those things you would put in your hanger on like a table and then I would, I wouldn't touch it ever again. So anyways, I think it's a great idea. It's free. So I'm not going to complain too much. We'll see what today's um, item is. So there you go. And that's it for, oh no, there's more. There's starter packs. Starter packs, um, I'll give you a little bit of a, a, I guess an opinion to the starter ship. So, so here we go. Um, you have the Aurora MR starter pack, Mustang Alpha, the Cutter, which don't get me started about the Cutter, 100i, the Avenger Titan, the Nomad. So here's my deal. You will not spend only the amount of money on a starter in your time at Star Citizen. I, look, I, I guarantee you, this game has raised over almost, well, almost like seven million. It's like six point something million dollars across almost five million accounts. So people are spending money. You're probably gonna be spending more money too. I personally would save up, and I'm gonna get cracked for this, like whatever, that's fine, I can debate. I would just get the Nomad. Out of all these starter packs, I think the best one for me personally is the Nomad. And I know I know there's a lot of people that like the, uh, the Avenger Titan. Uh, and and the, the Titan's a, a solid ship. It truly is. It's a solid ship. But I think it's the difference. And I'm just going to leave this up side by side for a couple seconds. I think it's the difference of what aesthetic you're wanting. Right? Like... Consolidated Outland has a flair of alien influence. So it's like human and alien technology in one. So the Nomad, it's, it's basically a hover ship. It's, it's this unique kind of flair to it. It's got cargo space in the back. It actually has almost like a, it's almost like a truck. Like you have a tailgate and you can put something um, like a cargo box inside um, of the back there, but it has an alien flair. Um, the inside of it kind of has an alien flair and I believe there's a bed. I don't, I think there's a bed in there as well. The Avenger Titan is your typical human fighter jet. I mean, you take a, you take a current fighter jet that you, you know, are familiar with, uh, and then you bend up the wings, like take the tips of the wings and bend them up and there you go. So if you like the more typical, uh, spaceship or spacecraft, Go for the Titan. It's 56 bucks right now. It's not bad at all. Um, but, but for me, it's like a space game fantasy. This is the one time I think I would encourage people looking at starter packs to go just a little bit further, spend $71 and get yourself that Nomad. I, I actually really like the Nomad. All right, we talked about the subscription passes uh, on last episode. This is the time to get your annual pass. Again, if you're renewing or you think um, that you're going to renew, I mean, this is this is the time you're getting twenty dollars off of the Centurion. So here's your Centurion one year pass. It was one hundred and ten dollars. Now it's a hundred. So I said twenty. I think it's it's ten dollars off. My math is my math is awesome. Um, it's the Imperator that's twenty dollars off. So the Imperator is usually two hundred and twenty dollars for the entire year, uh, and now it's a hundred ninety eight. So you're going to be saving ten percent right on both. Um, this is the time to do it, in my personal opinion. Subscriber packs, no difference here. Like every every single event always has um, always has like or every every subscriber. Uh, what am I trying to say? Like the subscription pledge store, whatever has the historical pledge items or the subscri the historical subscriber items. Good God, I'll get through this, I promise. Uh, but you can get everything historically. So get in there. Um, and get your and get your items. There's some of these items I haven't seen before though. Like I'm pretty sure I've never seen this uh, habitation plant set. I don't want to digress, but I don't think I've ever seen that before. Okay, moving on. Um, so there is some uh, unique upgrade options that you can see as well. So the Origin 100i comes with a holiday paint. You can upgrade to that. The Avenger Titan has uh, the ice break paint. Consolidated Nomad, uh, Consolidated Outland Nomad is the um, deck the whole paint. So some upgrade options there. Everything I literally just said and stumbled through towards the end there is available on that comlink page, the home page for Luminalia. So like I said, there's nothing really um, 
not groundbreaking, but like new. There's nothing really new this year, but I'm sure in the next couple of days, um, some of the items that we get from the daily calendar, the advent calendar, will absolutely be different. So um, let's go to the referral bonus since we mentioned it, sharing my screen. So you'll have kind of the same style of items, but a different color set. So let's get into it. Um, for you, so the person making the referral, you can see it on my screen, but this is your red and white outfit. So starting December 11th, the referrer, I can't say that, I, refer referral sounds too close. The person making the, ref, the reference or refer, well, my God, we're, we're gonna get through this, guys, I promise. The refer it gets the Avi's armor set, the Beacon Crimson undersuit, the Arrow Quicksilver backpack, the FS9 Stoneface LMG, the Pyro RYT Bloodline multi tool, the Gemini LH86 Pathfinder pistol, the Sawtooth Bloodstone combat knife, and the Luminalia Deck the Hole Drake Caterpillar paint. So basically, you're getting the red and white combination or color combination of all of those items. Whereas the person that you are referring, <laughs> hey, success, is getting the green and white combination. So your knife is gonna be green, your multi-tool items, uh, your armor, your weaponry is going to be green and white. So again, you can go into my notes, uh, you can see my reference code if you would like. Um, you get access to everything that I just described uh, right in your hangar day one, along with like 5,000 UEC, um, which is so irrelevant right now. It might make I don't know. It might be more relevant in the next couple of months or years, but right now, 5,000 UEC is, I mean, you'll get that in one bounty mission. So just trying to be honest with my listeners. Last but not least, for Luminalia anyways, remember, do you remember me mentioning um, that the CIG employees will be part of the uh, certain days and times of the Arena Commander? Well, here you go. This is it, this is the schedule. So December 15th through December 22nd, you've got Jake, Freja, Nico, Nico, Niku, I mean, if I mess up your name, brother, I'm so sorry. Jake Acapella, Galactica, uh, Wayne, again, a lot of individuals from, um, from the CIG, obviously offices, will be on across all servers. So <laughs> Jake playing on an Australia server, for gun rush, I, I, I don't know why you'd want to play on an OS server. <laughs> uh, that's gonna be fun. Um, pick your day, pick your time, enjoy playing with this individual. Um, I think it's a fun, it's a fun way to get the community involved with the you know, the development teams. So there you go. Okay, patch three twenty two. Unless you've been under a rock or you haven't been listening to Beyond the Verse, and this is your first episode to have listened to, um, you know what's happening in 322. There's been a lot of dialogue, a lot of teasing and in inside star citizens, a lot of social media content from content creators that have gone into the PTU and are showcasing the new reclaimer capabilities, etc. cetera. Um, this, this isn't uh, like breaking news to anyone, but let's go through it. Don't wanna spend maybe too much time going through it since it is kind of redundant information, but we do wanna talk about what we are getting from last night's patch release. So sharing my screen for those of you on YouTube, um, we always start with the Spectrum posts and then get into the actual, um, I guess the marketing posts, the comlink posts. So this is a really good landing page. This is under announcements, so if you get into your Spectrum uh, user interface, go to your announcements. It's one of the latest ones, obviously. Uh, but here's the Star Citizen Alpha 322 Rex to Riches now available. And it's a, it's a consolidated list of all the links that matter to you. And no, we, we are not <laughs> gonna go through every single one of these links. But the trailer, patch notes, salvage repair guide, information on the Santoc Yai, the X1, the Cutter Rambler, um, new player guides, um, it's all here. So for your own perusal, go through, click through everything and read it. I just wanted to showcase that there's a phenomenal landing page that has everything that you ever want to know or need to know about the patch in one location. So let's just move on to the next one. Here we go. The actual announcement uh, in Spectrum. 
So of course this dropped yesterday, um, but it's again, the patch notes for 322. The important thing I wanted to pull out from this um, is that it is a short term database reset. It is not a long term persistence database reset. So basically like an LTP or long term persistence uh, reset is like it, it's a full wipe. It, it wipes literally everything. You start over, no reputation, none of your gear stays with you. It's a complete wipe. So that is not happening. That's the long-term persistence database reset. That's not happening. The short-term database reset is like small, low-hanging fruit reputation. Like we had to start over with salvaging. Um, I was doing 50K salvaging missions a couple of days ago, but now I had to go back to the 1000 um, UEC uh salvaging mission so like those types of things you're gonna have to um uh do again and then you have to select your starting location you have to recreate your character but but you wanted this you wanted this because one of the major items that were dropped <laughs> um was new hair so you wanted to choose that you can choose a new starting location i think i literally just said that um and a lot of your gear stays with you so none of the consumables so you don't keep your ammunition you don't keep your med pins um so anything consumable you lose but you have access to all the gear you had so my personal favorite is like the i'm gonna mess this up of course um, but the, uh, like the Mark X, the Mark X, it's a medium gear, but I love the singularity color, uh, of the, of the Mark X. Um, I, it was all in my hanker still, or it was all in my inventory still. So there you go. And you start out with 20,000 UEC. Again, really doesn't mean much. Um, I, I take it back. It actually does. It actually does mean much because a lot of the, uh, the bounding hush, uh, wow, the bounty hunting missions and the salvaging missions, they start off with you actually having to pay a fee, right, to be certified. So you do need money to get started. So the 20,000 is actually important. We're not gonna go through the known issues, but let's go through the new features. So locations, additional derelict settlements. So 15 new derelict settlements with both mission gameplay, social elements, and shops. That's super interesting. These inhabited settlements are spread throughout the wilderness of Hurston and Microtech, using the Rastar tool with a larger expanded library of new and existing assets. Some locations are accessible via the star map, while other new settlements are more discreet and appear behind missions. All NPCs at these locations are neutral, making up a population of independent civilians and members of the Dusters faction, and have been updated to use the new hair tech and faction clothing. New Hurston locations include Zephyr, Maker's Point, Ludlow, Pickers Field, Finn's Folly, Weeping Cove, Cutter's Rig, and Rappel. That, that I'm pretty sure that's Rappel, it's not Rappel. It's, it's Rappel. New Microtech locations include Frostbite, Razor's Edge, Bloodshot Ridge, Harper's Point, Aster's Clearing, Moreland Hills, and Dunbro. Gameplay, Salvage. It's way too much to read. <laughs> there is so much that has happened with Salvage, and we got to experience last night during the org night. Um, but yes, the Reclaimer turns into a vacuum cleaner. Um, the internal storage piece is huge. So instead of having to get out of your seat um, or having to run boxes like continuously, you can fill up your filler 100%. So the left scraper fills up 240 SCU. Same with the right scraper. It fills up 240 SCU. You can fill those up all the way and then you can uh, ex uh, eject those in the back. Or if you have a runner, you can just keep them going, auto eject. And so every time you get the one SCU, you can spit out one SCU or 2816. So again, that's that's size one, two, eight, and 16, not 32, 16 is the largest. Um, so that's super awesome. Obviously the Reclaimer, well, and the Vulture, uh, introduces the fracturing mode and the disintegration mode. Those, that's kind of how you vacuum things up now um, in salvaging, so that's super important. Um, also, inventory openable, openable cargo containers that also 
dropped as well. Uh, and then ships and vehicles. We'll get into some of this in, in the Inside Star Citizen. But we had the A. Opoa Santok Yai, the Origin X1, X1 Velocity, X1 Force, and the Drake Cutter Rambler. And let me... Okay, fine. Fine, I'll meet you like halfway. The Rambler is not a bad... <laughs> It's not a bad version of the cutter. In fact, it's the only version of the cutter I can stomach, I can tolerate. Um, it's the more exploration version. And again, I, I don't want to get ahead of the podcast here, but it's got a little bit better amenities, a little bit better um, capabilities. Um, I can I can stomach it as a, um, as a ship. Whereas I still can't get over the aesthetics though. It looks, it looks like a, looks like a trailer. It looks like a trailer. Can't get over it. All right, moving on. So that was the Spectrum posts. Let's get into the comm link or the actual announcement post. Um, so here's the beautiful page that showcases Star Citizen. Uh, they're calling this release Rex to Riches. So let's get into it. There is a, um, a YouTube uh, video that we can watch real quick. I, again, if it shows a commercial i apologize up in advance i do have the inside star citizen downloaded so we don't run that risk for inside star citizen but here we go here's the youtube video um i'll narrate if it's just visual for those of you on podcast yeah so like right now the 400 i is landing this is probably going to be showing the X1. Yep. This is the player with the new hair model getting onto the Origin X1. Obviously, extremely beautiful, very sleek. Be distinctive is the uh, subtitle. Women's haircuts. And uh, unfortunately, the new uh, Rambler. They're showing you now the new Derelicts, which is awesome. They look really good. Reclaim and Gain. They're showing now the new functionality of the Reclaimer. Raid the new Jump Towns. It's now on an island. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. It looks good. It looks really good. Okay, some more jump town. Strike fearlessly. This is now showing the Santok Yai. Awesome. Yeah, so again, this is a podcast. <laughs> So I'm trying to also narrate for everybody as well. So it was a good showcase of, of the ships and the different like locations. Uh, when I say locations, not just derelict sites, but the jump town as well. That's something I think that flew under the radar, um, in my opinion. No one really talked about jump town moving or changing or having different locations. But there's been a lot of chatter um, on socials and obviously in our Discord about jump town moving to an island. And so you just saw the first glimpse of, you know, invading an island. I think that's such a cool change, right? So I'm not really going to read through everything because we just kind of covered most of it. But there's um, images and there's videos on structural salvage, like the changes to what it looks like. Uh, yeah, I mean, so I'm, I'm going to leave. I'm kind of leave this here. Um, the derelict settlements, here's the, again, it's parts of the video we just watched, but it goes through the derelict settlements, uh, reworked character hairstyles using the Squadron 42 tech. That's awesome. Here you go. So because we mentioned the Jump Town global events, let's just read it really quick. Jump Town is back and more dangerous than ever. The gangs behind the drug labs have updated and reinforced their existing locations and added a brand new facility on an island somewhere in the Hurston wilderness gear up the chaos begins on on December 22nd so the last day of luminalia that's that's awesome that, that that's going to be a lot of fun uh, i think it's going to be a lot of fun i 
I don't know. I have mixed emotions about them taking the location so far away, but I guess it always was. I guess it always was. So the train of thought I, w I had was, um, you know, the whole point of, of this was like a, f not forced, it provided a PVP opportunity in, uh, in the, in the environment of PVE, right? So you're exploring, you're doing your missions, you might come across or stumble across an entire war happening, a PVP war happening in Jump Town. That was a really cool experience. So my train of thought was if you push this off on an island, the chances of you stumbling across that um, without being deliberate are probably, probably pretty low, but it's not like every Jump Town's on an island. So this is why I'm walking this back as I'm saying it. I think having the island is a really cool concept. I was an avid uh, Ghost Recon Breakpoint player. I loved it. They had that raid that you would fly out to on the island. You would conduct the raid as a team um, on the island. I thought that was a really awesome uh, approach. And this reminds me, this is reminiscent uh, of my time doing that. So, okay. Well, no, there's more. So I stopped sharing my screen. I'm going back to sharing my screen. Um, here's a little video. These are all videos, by the way. There's videos showcasing personal cargo containers. These are actual containers that are opening up, right? And they're showing you what's inside. Like it's such a, such an awesome, awesome concept. This is on the side of a, um, a whole, a whole D, right? Hold, yeah, the whole D. Okay. Arena Commander updates. Uh, we already talked about that with new maps. Here we go. I feel like my audio is cutting in and out. All right. Sentak AI video on that. The X1 series, Drake Cutter. And again, I'm skipping through this because it's going to be covered on the video of Inside Star Citizen. There we go. Um, and I think we're going to stop there before we get into the ship offers. As always, with patch releases, with events, you're going to get a series of ship offers. So for this, for Alpha 322, you get 12 vehicles added to the pledge store. So the 400i, the C1 Spirit, the Cutter Rambler, the Freelancer, the Reclaimer, the Reliant Tana, the Santok Yai, the Terrapin, the Vulture, the X1, the X1 Force, and the X1 Velocity. Okay. I want to give y'all a little bit of a pro tip. So I'm going to take y'all to the pledge store. Here we go. We're doing this live. Don't buy the X1. I'll explain. Don't buy the X1. Okay. You're going to upgrade to it. So right now, if I were to go into, I'm just going to type in the X1. I think you have to have three, uh, X, well, yeah. You have to have three syllables or three characters. So the X1 is down here like in the 50s and 60s. I promise there's a reason why I'm doing this. Where are you, X1? So the X1 velocity is $55. So we're going to do more info. We're going to look at that in a second. So X1 velocity, $55. Here's the X1 force. The X1 Velocity War Bond. Uh, we're clicking all these. X1. The X1 Force War Bond. I'm clicking all these, by the way. All right, let me show you. Six month insurance. Six month insurance. Six month insurance. These are all, regardless of War Bond, six month insurance. Don't do it. Instead, buy the Cutter Rambler. The Cutter Rambler for $45, lifetime insurance. So you buy the Cutter Rambler for $45 lifetime insurance and then ship upgrade to the X1. That will transfer the lifetime insurance you got from the Cutter Rambler and it will apply it to your upgraded X1. You're welcome. Enjoy. <laughs> uh, you 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 tend to learn these things when either you or an org member are are into the uh, the CCU chain game. Um, I'm not. We have an org member who is. Um, but these are just after being in this game for over a year, year and a half now at this point. It's just a best practice. 
you get that cutter rambler i mean you can buy 10 cutter ramblers so you can have that lifetime insurance token and then as the year progresses you upgrade from that cutter rambler to whatever ship you want to apply that lifetime insurance there's gonna be a lot of cutter rambler purchases you're welcome Alrighty, roadmap roundup. I debated whether or not to do this because, it, it, again, it's it's all it's all irrelevant now at this point since we launched everything. But I do want to bring everybody's attention to this replication layer update. This is important. No, it did not come out with last night's three twenty two. But the replication layer update is planned now, planned to come out in 322.x so at some point in the next couple of patches um, smaller patches we will get the replication layer update so to the article as some of you may have seen testing for the upcoming separation of the replication layer from game servers is underway with additional testing required as well as fixes and updates coming in the 322 branch we're moving this card to the 322 column targeting a 322x patch i'm glad they added the x patch <laughs> the Spectrum post mentioned X. This did not. It caused a lot of confusion. As we continue to make progress on this important update. There you go. And then the rest of the cards launched. So that's why I kind of debated whether or not to go into it or not. And then what usually happens here, um, I'm now showing the release view on the roadmap. Um, we would go in and see 322s like you know what what to expect in this in this patch release core tech is still tentative this is the replication layer update but the rest is good to go um, we don't see a 323 obviously um, and there's nowhere in the progress tracker like when you click on the progress tracker and you look at quarter uh, the two quarters or year view you see nothing in 2024 and initially you're like damn like the game has nothing planned for next year you could not be further from the truth and this is like a gorgeous segue into inside star citizen and so i'm going to leave the progress tracker here we're going to go into inside star citizen and i'm probably going to shut up the entire time and just let you digest everything you're about to see or hear so enjoy the next few minutes um, we'll come back and and there's there's a lot to talk about so here we go enjoy Alpha 322 is right around the corner and available for testing now on the public test universe. But arriving with it are three newly flyable and drivable vehicles from manufacturers as varied as Apoa, Origin, and Drake. Let's find out more. So in Alpha 322, we have three new vehicles available and they cover a huge range of both size and role. And we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about them. Let's start with the most exotic, the Aopa Santokiai. The Santok Yai is a medium fighter from Aopoa, but it doesn't follow the traditional medium fighter role that we see with human manufacturers. It has, for its size, quite a lot of health and classic Xi'an high maneuverability, as well as being extremely flashy in both its function and form. The idea with the alien ships is that we don't want them just to feel alien. We want them to feel different within their own rights within that kind of uh, alien spectrum. On the Gatak side of things, we've really kind of tried to make them feel quite industrial, quite strong and chunky. Whereas on the Apoa side of things, we took more inspiration from the insect form. So we want them to feel a lot faster, a little bit more kind of aggressive and have a bit more attack in their shapes. When you first see the Santok Kiai, you'll clearly see the family lineage between itself and the Katu Alm, which is the light fighter from Aopoa. It's their kind of second Xi'an ship that they've made, and it's really bringing kind of a big brother. They both have two stages or two transform states from the landed to the flight pose, and you see that very classic Aopoa flowering transformation from a more horizontal position to the more vertical flight and combat position. It's still got the kind of nice big transforming kind of style when it transforms from landed mode into to flight mode, but we've really tried to kind of push the alien aesthetics a little bit further this time, both interior and exterior. One of the kind of more unique elements, I think, on the Santok Yai is its cockpit. Not just the, the space inside, but actually how you enter it. It's got this really kind of exotic, shall I say, seat that comes down to collect you from the player space. And that kind of all floats down and takes you back into 
your actual pilot position. One of the things that we really spent quite a, a bit of time investigating and kind of really trying to kind of nail the visuals on was the actual interactions with the cockpit. We wanted to make sure we weren't stepping on the toes of the what we did in the Gatax cockpit, and it needed to be like its own unique thing. Erwin and the Austin team kind of really nailed that visually. It's got these really nice sort of slate buttons with all the Jean text in it. And one of the things we were really keen to do with kind of all of our alien ships is remove a lot of that human element. They may be made to be human compatible, but we really wanted them to feel like their native race was the, the people that built it, and that's who it was made for us, number one. And so we've got these kind of really nice interactive tablets with all the Xeon text on them. Do have a number of paints coming out with the Santok UI. Uh, they are still currently just being developed and signed off as, as we're filming this now. Again, we tried to kind of do something not, not necessarily kind of completely new, but kind of just push the bar slightly with what we're trying to do. It's, it's that kind of fine thing where alien doesn't always mean fancy and, and, and unique, uh, but we do want it to feel a little bit different to what our kind of human races are. It's very obvious when you see the silhouette of the ship and when you see it in flight, what it is, but the paints is kind of that little uh, icing on top. And also, it kind of gives that really nice read when you get up and close and personal with it. The Santok Yai is a fighter through and through. It really excels at that. It doesn't have any secret hidden features, but it does have all of our latest tech and features within it, such as weapon racks, personal storage, and accessible components. So this ship is really for those who prize maneuverability and position in combat. The firepower of the ship is pretty good for its size, but its real strength is its maneuverability. So that's the Santok Yai, available in 322, and we think it's going to be a great addition to our lineup of fighters and alien ships. Just like the other ones, it's great for those players who want that role, but just want something a bit more stylish and exotic. Just quickly, I, I, I think it's... Uh... I think it is good for me to jump in and inject here my reactions. Um, that way I'm not trying to remember everything. So the Santaki Yai is, is a gorgeous, gorgeous ship, and it absolutely is insect-like. Um, and I'm trying to think, like, the Mirai Fury kind of has the same maybe uh, uh, aesthetics. You have, the, like, the sphere cockpit. You've got the the engines or those rotating balls of, 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 of an engine. Um, I think cosmetically they, they nailed it. I love the way these look. Um, I think it's going to be one of those ships that I try to buy in-game whenever it's available to buy in-game. Um, and again, only because... Sometimes the alien ships to me, um, they're great like during alien week and I'm like, man, those look awesome, but they kind of wear down over time. In my personal opinion, they wear down over time. Um, but I love the capability of the maneuverability. I, I am much more my play style. I am much more of a maneuverable, like outmaneuver your opponent. You don't have to be the strongest. You don't have to be the fastest, but if you outmaneuver, uh, it goes back to my military days. Um, outmaneuvering is a lot more effective than a massive force. So I I love the concept. I love the idea. That's why I love my F-8C so much. It's fast and nimble for a heavy fighter. Um, but it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful ship. The Santaki I was nailed. Congratulations, CIG and the ship team. That is a phenomenal looking ship. From there, let's go from space combat and atmospheric combat down to the surface and talk about the Origin X1 series. The X1 is Origin's first hover biking game. It's their kind of answer to some of the other hover bikes we've already got from different manufacturers like the, the Nox, the Dragonfly. This bike was kind of developed alongside the 400i in its concept phase. And the idea was that this is that kind of classic, smaller kind of day vehicle that you can take out from your big, exciting explorer ship. Those two kind of go hand in hand. It has its own little garage at the front of the 400i, and it really just allows you to, once you land on planet, you can then kind of leave everything back on your ship and go out and explore and, and kind of chase down the thrills of the, the planet on a, a nice little hover bike. I'm sure the more enterprising of you out there will be finding all different ways of getting these into places they shouldn't be, such as the upcoming distribution centers. They're showing an X1 going across in our core or I think one of the things that's been kind of super nice to see as the bike's kind of gone through its development is really selling uh, the idea of this the bike being a hopper bike. We've got a lot of uh, 
VFX and, and lighting going in from the teams, really selling it that it, it does feel like a, a bike in the future. We've got these nice brake lights at the rear, we've got the kind of front lights, and one of my favorite bits on it is actually the cockpit, the kind of like the, the driver's space. The dashboard in there looks super nice, really sleek, kind of classic origin, and it all flows really nicely with the rest of the shapes. The X1 series is a series of three bikes that allow Origin to have their own edge of the market in terms of hover bikes and to have three different play styles within them. With the X1 Force, this is designed to aid in ground combat, allowing you to be on a speedy, small profile target with some shielding to allow you to absorb a few hits and help engage combat. And then we have the Velocity, which removes the weapon hard point and instead gains speed. Whilst tuning is underway at the time of recording, we intend the X1 Velocity to be a competitor to the Knox, and both of those are designed to be faster than the Dragonfly, which is more utilitarian. So the Velocity is a great addition to the ground racing community and will be right at home in all the ground racing tracks. The base X1 is there to provide an option for those of you who don't like the Knox or just don't like whatever aesthetic you think Drake users have. See, it's not just me that hates, well, not, hates on Drake. <laughs> uh, yeah, whatever cosmetic. Look, um, I see the X1 as like a BMW motorcycle, right? So if, if you ride bikes, um, the, the, the BMW, and I'm going to get the nomenclature wrong, but it's like the S, it's like S2000, but it's, it's like their fastest sport bike. This is what I think it is. First off, I think Origin is basically BMW with like a Tesla twist. <laughs> um, but the, uh, the X1 is absolutely a motorcycle. It's absolutely a speed bike um, that is in the future. That's the best way I can describe it. And it, and it looks exactly like that. Um, I, I love it. I, I, um, I would use it just for racing. I, I can't imagine exploring. They said something about exploring, like getting it out of your 400i and going and exploring. Okay, you're gonna explore, but then what? You can't take a cargo box. You can't, um, like, you can't really take anything from your exploration. And let's say you do come across something that you're like, wow, I want to explore this more, and wish I had a cargo box. You gotta fly your happy ass back to the 400i, find something that is that can um, handle that mission. So for me personally, exploration on a ground vehicle is kind of more RSI links. It's kind of more, um, like, I don't know, maybe like one of the um, STVs. Uh, I guess so, yes. Yeah, something along those lines, like the buggies um, would probably be more my style, I think, but um, these would be racing. I would absolutely race these in Arena Commander. I would absolutely race these, obviously, in um, in the PU as well. So here, I apologize to my listeners and viewers. Here's the Cutter Rambler. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm kidding. Look, this, this is close to being um, palpable. This is close to being palpable. It's still an RV. <laughs> it is still a camper um, that I can't see myself ever really flying willingly. So I reacted before it even showed, but that, that's my opinion. Here we go to the video. And speaking of Drake aesthetics, that moves us nicely on to the last ship of 322, the Drake Cutter Rambler. The Cutter Rambler is our third variant of the Cutter series, and it kind of rounds off the series as a whole. As we talked about at CitizenCon, the Drake Cutter family was always designed as a family of three, and we've shown you the base one and the Scout. The Rambler is the third one, and it is designed from the start to be the more fleshed out premium starter explorer combination of the three. I know premium and Drake might be a bit of a, a weird juxtaposition there. They are a very functional manufacturer, a no frills manufacturer. That really kind of is sold nicely on the interior space. We've sacrificed some of the, the rear cargo space for the larger habitation. This allows extra space for both a suit locker, a food machine, and somewhere to eat that food and a nice little table to chill at. But even within that habitation, you can see how they've moved the bulkhead back one, they've moved the bathroom, they've opened up this nice space, and then they put you know, a seat, the desk, a little jump seat, and the bare minimum you need as a pilot going out and exploring our, our universe. We want to make sure there's visually some differences on the exterior. So we've got the kind of visual only differences, such as the kind of like the modified rear section, 
We've also got the kind of more functional stuff. So on top, it's got the extended fuel tank. It literally has a bike rack on top. <laughs> like, like they, they really went the camper route uh, on this ship. Visually, we kind of lent into the idea of having your, your, your Winnebago or your camper van or whatever it might be, and it's got this kind of like roof rack aesthetic, but it's actually kind of stores all the extra kind of fuel for the extended fuel tanks. And then as with the Scout, we've got the change in the thrusters. And again, we've got a unique set of thrusters on a, a new nacelles on each side that really help. Now that they did well, the, the thrusters look amazing. With the Rambler being kind of a, a longer range or an extended range, vehicle i think having the kind of like the slightly smaller they look a little bit more efficient on the engines rather than these great big kind of individual engines you've got these slightly smaller more of them individual thrusters i'm very happy with the rambler one of the things that we kind of really tried to lean into when we were developing the rambler was drake's kind of mentality towards building their ships i think it kind of ticked that box of exactly what Drake would do. They've got this chassis, they want to make a somewhere you can spend a bit more time in, somewhere that's a little bit more comfortable, but they're still kind of working to that Drake budget and design ethos. So I'm, I'm very happy with how it turned out. The Rambler really takes the, the base cutter to the next level in terms of living on board. I think we all saw that when the cutter came out, but it was very much more of a camper van than an RV, which is what the Rambler is. So that's a wrap up of all the new vehicles coming to the Persistent Universe in 322. And as always, we look forward to seeing you all use them and abuse them in all different ways in the live game. Now, of course, Alpha 322 comes with more than just vehicles. There are structural salvage, openable cargo containers, new derelict settlements, new hairs for players, new maps for arena commander, and more. But since this is our last episode of the year, we have a tradition here at ISC of looking back at everything that's happened the last 12 months and reliving some of our favorite moments. And, well, look, 2023 was good. Great even if you gloss over that little rough patch in the middle there. But heading into the new year, all that I can really think about is everything that's on the horizon that's about to make 2024 the biggest and baddest year of our project yet. This is super important. If if you're if you're driving and distracted, like maybe pause and listen to this when you can focus. But the next couple of minutes is what has the entire Star Citizen community lit. We are we are on fire about what Jared is about to get into. So enjoy the next couple of minutes, but I'm going to preface by saying get some place where you can focus on what is about to be dropped. Here we go. So if it's all right with you, I'd like to indulge myself, maybe switch out my CIG cap and put my backer hat on and tell you what has me excited about this next year for the Persistent Universe in a segment that I'm calling Disco Lando's Star Citizen 2020 Forecast. Now, without talking specific dates, let's discuss what's being targeted and currently on track for release in just the first half of 2024, starting with Master Modes, the new way to pilot and operate ships we've been discussing since CitizenCon 2952. Now, whether that's every ship or a staggered rollout of groups of vehicles depends on how work progresses, but it's a major change to the way spaceships operate in the persistent universe, and you can be sure that we'll update on it more when the time comes. And of course, when your ships aren't in flight, they can be stored in the newly persistent hangars that are arriving with freight elevators, freight kiosks, and the new cargo transaction system that we've shared on both ISC and this year's CitizenCon. Now, all combined, they form the next major evolution of cargo careers and will also have far-reaching, broader implications for the entire Star Citizen experience. And then outside of vehicles and hangars, there's also a variety of FPS combat improvements coming to the first half of 2024 with improvements to reloading, the weapon wear and misfire system, scopes and dynamic crosshairs and charge and drain, and even more we'll be able to show you once we return in the new year. And then outside of strictly FPS combat, there are new player character features coming like the updates to the EVA system, the visor and lens system, loot screens, default item interactions and the personal interaction system, and there's even new shopping and mission apps in development now. 
And while we're talking about apps, the first half of 2024 is also currently scheduled to see the arrival of our new character customizer with things like tattoos, piercings, scars, and yes, Virginia, it's true, beards. Now as for how many and of what kind, only Andre knows for sure, but you can bet we're gonna ask him sometime around March. And then, of course, if you're in game, there's also a little thing called Moby Glass and an awfully big thing called Star Map. They're both getting their big updates in the first half of next year. And have I mentioned those enormous distribution centers that'll be the new microcosm homes for every gameplay and mission feature that exists in Star Citizen, as well as the four, five, six, let's just say several new and updated vehicles that are making their way to the persistent universe in just the first six months of 2024? I did, just now. I don't you check those off. Whew. Okay, so real talk, CIG hat back on. Now, you're probably looking at your screen and saying to yourself, uh, what about Pyro and 4.0? Well, don't fret. The things that we just covered are those that aren't too dependent on continuing foundational tech work like server meshing. So we feel pretty confident in targeting everything that we just shared for the first six months. But when it comes to something as enormous as the complete Pyro system in Alpha 4.0, well, that's where the new preview channel comes into play. Now that said, Alpha 4.0 is currently targeting a summer 2024 release, but that won't mean that you have to wait until then to play it or learn more about it. That's because in 2024, we'll continue doing play tests like the one we just completed, and you'll be able to follow along with its development firsthand on the preview channel. That's the planets, moons, space stations, settlements, and outlaw lifestyle that comes within the Pyro system, but also an entire host of additional new features, content, and quality of life improvements like, oh, I don't know, fully functional jump points, the new quantum travel system, new vehicle HUD and MFD work, resource management, hacking, and much, much more, all being worked on in tandem. The preview channel will let you and us test 4.0 together while maintaining the stability of the persistent universe with all those other great additions we just discussed. And then in the summer of 2024, two become one, and we can avoid that thing that didn't quite go the way that we'd hoped. The holiday live stream? And then just because we're cheeky, there are still some things better left for you to discover on your own. And don't forget, we haven't even talked about the back half of the year yet. All in all, 2024 is shaping up to be the watershed year for Star Citizen. And if we've learned anything this year, it's that through the trials of 318 to the successes of CitizenCon and everything in between before that and coming up next, Star Citizen is a project that continues to iterate, to evolve, and to embody an experience you simply can't find anywhere else, whether that's in the universe or within our community that makes all this possible. So thank you for helping us reach the heights that we have and buckle up for the journey still ahead. We're in for one hell of a year. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. Thanks for letting us share the process of game development with you. And we'll see you all here next year. <laughs> Insane. Like, I, I don't even know, like, what, which, so, which, which, which we cover first. Um, everything, everything that happened in Citizen Con is coming out in the, f well, it's everything. Everything except for base building seems to be scheduled for the first half of next year. That's insane. Distribution centers, um, the user interfaces, that's that's going to be enormous. Um, you won't recognize the game at this point next year. And so, you know, it's been crazy. Um, I said it kind of tongue in cheek at, at the top end, and, and which, by the way, this kind of wraps up our podcast. I don't think we're, we have enough time to get into the lore makers community uh, questions. A couple gold nuggets there, but go on your own time to read that. But I think we will wrap up uh, this episode around this topic. But um, the uh, <laughs> it's it's going to be a year that uh, is going to prove, hmm, I say prove me right. So so here we go. I said it tongue in cheek at the top. I, I need to be careful with like how I say this. 
I said it in jest where, hey, we're always right. Good job. A W for Beyond the Verse podcast, whatever. At the end of the day, it, it's luck. Like I can I can base what little gaming industry I have with Amazon Game Studios and my experience as a senior product manager. Like I, I can kind of put all that together, but none of it matters. Like none of it matters. CIG is going to do what CIG needs and wants to do. Um, I get lucky. <laughs> I get lucky. But in 2023... Um, I have been right every time. And again, that's not a, a pat on the back or a fluff. It's just, it, you see the writing on the wall. You can see where the commitment starts to become, um, or the ideas start becoming commitments. We were right about Pyro being playable by the end of the year. It was preview channel, but it was playable. We were right about Squadron 42 being announced and people will still fight me today they're like, oh no, it's going into the polish phase. That is quite literally as close to an, of an announcement as you can possibly make. It means that they're done. It means that they're done with everything. They're just making, they're just polishing. Like you build your car. Once the car is built, you go through a polish phase, right? You make sure the paint is nice. There's no dents. It goes through some auditing, some testing. The game's done. Squadron 42 is done. I guarantee you next Citizen Con will be uh, maybe London. It, I, don't, I don't know. It, it, it will be the celebration of the launch of the first chapter of Squadron 42. You won't recognize it. That's why they're pushing all of this in, in the first half. We call it H1. So in H1 of 2024, we're going to have 4.0 released. 4.0 releases showing the capability of the multiplayer game, if you will, just in time for Squadron 42 to be out before CitizenCon next year. I, I can't, like, I, no one has the anecdotes or the information to push back effectively against, against that. So I'm not saying like, because I was right at every turn this past year, it's right next year. It's just, it, it's, it's fundamentally, um, or it's foundational. It's based on a foundation of what CIG has been openly showing us the roadmaps, right? The progress trackers, the inside star citizens, I'm not the only one. I can't be the only one who sees this coming to fruition next year. Now, there are some milestones. There are some major gaps uh, that we need to, to hurdle. Like, we absolutely have to figure out server meshing or the, uh, I guess, a, a dynamic version of server meshing. We have to get that done. But before we do that, we got to get the replication layer done. Right, we talked about that at the top of the call, or call the the podcast. We talked about the separation of the replication layer. Like, that needs to happen first at some point during the 322 life cycle and then we get into server meshing and then we get into the dynamic server meshing and now we're good for pyro 4.0 because again pyro is essentially done too they're just waiting on the back end tech to release it all in one patch so it's exciting it, it, this is an exciting time to be a backer of Star Citizen, to be a, to be a listener of Beyond the Verse podcast, <laughs> because we're in this. Like we're clearly in this for the long run. Um, I'm excited to be doing this with you, especially like my org, you joining Soul Provision with us. Um, the next several months are going to be such a joy. For those of you entering December holidays. Christmas. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I want to wish you happy holidays. Uh, we will have a podcast next week. Um, we will not have a podcast the week of Christmas. It's not going to be a thing. Um, don't want to get divorced. <laughs> but I also want to spend time with my family. So the week of Christmas, absolutely not. Next week, yes. Um, and we'll obviously do one at the top of the year, uh, the first week after New Year's. So I look forward to that conversation as always. Uh, for my own sanity, let me get into my uh, outro so we cover everything. But again, overall, I just really hope this finds each one of you well, sincerely. Um, you can get involved in the conversation with your questions, comments, concerns. I love saying emotional outbursts. Please feel free. It makes for a colorful conversation. <laughs> but emailing us at contact at beyondtheversehq.com or interacting with our Spotify Q&A and polls at the end of each episode over on the Spotify app. Join our in-game organization. We've been talking about this entire podcast called Soul Provision by applying at www.robertspaceindustries.com forward slash orgs forward slash 
provision. You can watch our video replays over at YouTube. Um, that's youtube.com forward slash at BTV underscore cast. And then on all socials, we're forward slash BTV underscore cast. Once again, thank you for joining us. Last, we hope we find we hope this finds you well. And until next time, safe travels as you traverse beyond the verse. Take care, everybody.